so now let's move to the next session we have prince kumar here so uh, he's almost a no code code journalist helping businesses with their online presence using wordpress and other tools and simplify some of their operations with spreadsheet and automation so here i would like to call him to present a lightning talk on the topic is work not satisfying anymore a proven ideas to think i just hope that i leave you all satisfied with this talk that is my minimum expectation with this talk okay uh so okay so this talk has no stats trying to convince you of any idea to prove if you think an idea may work for you just give it a try it may work because satisfaction dissatisfaction are heavily subject subjective things so if you think it can work you should try it and uh, this talk also doesn't have a q and a session uh, this is a 10 minute lightning talk but if you have any question i am happy to answer you can find me at happiness bar after the session or you can send me tweet over at the rate one more prince okay uh uh have you got any of this i will repeat one by one and uh, please raise your hand if you have got any of these thoughts in your work life uh, i feel like i am not making a difference how many okay seems like oh uh, uh, any time in your okay if you have felt these kind of things any time in your work life okay i feel like i am not making a difference very few okay i don't feel challenged anymore yeah i don't enjoy working with my colleagues wow i am not being recognized for my contributions wow okay i am not being compensated fairly <laughs> i don't feel like i have a good work life balance wow i don't feel like i am growing or developing in my role okay so we have pretty much this talk is i guess this is going to be somewhat relevant uh, for your needs okay so before we try to fix these things let's take a few step back and to understand our basics okay humans we just in case if you forget we are hi highly adaptable animals so this works great but sometimes this becomes a very big problem the problem is we get bored very fast with things and as a human we seek a lot of novelty okay uh, let's look at look at few examples uh, in your life there are two kinds of example one is where we don't get bored if despite doing multiple times and there is one example where we go, get bored very fast like we repeat a lot of task daily like eating sleeping going on a walk though they are very repetitive in nature but i don't think these things have managed to bore anyone here like daily essential activity but on the other hand we have various tasks in our work it could be a smaller task in your work life which is even which repeats even five times in a week, five times in a month but it managed to bore you so okay so these are look, we are just looking at symptoms right now. <laughs> okay uh, when do we feel dissatisfaction with anything if we try to look at the root cause it's most of the time when reality is not better than our expectation so uh, we will come later on this we will come to this problem very soon at the end of the okay so one of the common problem uh, based on my exploration i never had a luckily or unluckily i never had a proper work or i employer full time employer so i do not have much experience but based on all the people i talked i or all the resources i could find online all the researches one of the biggest uh, 
thing is most people try to find meaning of their life in work at some stage of their life please raise your hand if you are looking or if you have ever used to look for a considerable meaning for your life in your work yeah we have a very few so those who have not started looking for meaning of life kind of questions so this is a kind of sort preparation in advance if you come to those questions okay so uh, uh, it is not impossible to find meaning or something meaningful for your life in work but it is very hard to find those meaning in your work it's generally for most people so there are a good number of things where you can find meaning or uh, these are like almost everywhere a good thing about humans are uh, we we have the ability to associate meaning with anything or satisfaction with anything we can see around some we see some tasks we find boring but many people find very meaningful and there are a lot of important things where you can find a good amount of satisfaction there instead of looking that in work this could be your family relationships raising a kid volunteering hobbies personal growth those some of things could be fun also you can like chat gpt or mid journey community involvements like word camps you can find a good amount of satisfaction meaning here okay and uh, see this suggestion here is not to reduce or stop working the idea is to not associate 100% of your identity or meaning with your work only that is the key idea here. okay so let's look at few problems at like is truly work the problem so based on what i have understood it's less about what you do it's more about how you see it so i am almost sure many of us have seen some very low income low skilled profession professionals who seem very satisfied while working but many cxos many high level management people or high level government employees government officials uh, seems extremely dissatisfied with their work so it is certain that it's less about the work they do it's certainly something else and in most cases it is how they see it so and uh, one of the idea here is ask yourself where does work stand in your life at one end it could be just an essential activity like uh, eating sleeping it is just an essential activity which i do uh, to earn money and which help me live my life uh, live a comfortable life in this world where everything is dependent on money so that could be one of end if you are at that end it is very unlikely that you are you are unsatisfied that is a way. and it at one end it could be something that is a part of your identity and in that case a lot of your emotional and a lot of your emotional satisfaction and personal life will be heavily influenced by your work okay so one of the idea i had is whenever we uh, think about our problem most of the time we are just looking at surface level problem so if we want to solve any problem the most important thing is to find the root cause so Uh, i call this like looking the problem objectively removing all the subjective layer and try to find the root cause so let's look at one example like if you if at work uh, someone is feeling extremely overwhelmed so it is possible that the feeling of overwhelming could be from too much work to do but if we go a little deeper it is very possible that they are feeling overwhelmed because they have got more task and if we just ask why they have got more task it is possible that uh, or why they feel that that is more task it is possible that they might be incompetent or unskilled not skilled enough that they can do that job for example uh, your manager may think that this task is for one hour and you think this is going to take 10 hours that is possible that may be a possible case based on uh, your efficiency or way of working okay and hmm? okay. uh, and uh, one of the reason could be why you got more work than you could handle could be like you find it tough to say no to your superior or managers and why you find it tough it is possible that you have a personal habit of not being able to set boundaries or limits in your roles that could be personal too that could be uh, at work too and why you can't do that it is very possible that 
you might not be comfortable communicating your needs and limits properly so when you come at a problem which is manageable which is solvable at in your capacity then you can solve it so in most cases there could be a problem inside you which is leading to that surface level problem and if you manage to solve one root cause it is very possible that that will solve at least 5 to 10 problems in your life okay so uh, let's look at your mind versus your work and the objective so it's better that we get the differences clear and the, the good <laughs> The objective or the needs of the minds are extremely different from the needs and the objective of an organization or work. So at, at our mind, our minds are like, we all know that we look novelty, we look, uh, we try to look for new things, we try to experiment. But ironically, the kind of economic system we have set up where, where in case of organization, only uh, risk is not well rewarded only those kind of risks which are calculated and has the potential to return decent money is going to be appreciated in work so you may seek for something completely new but work may not appreciate that so those are like two different objective and it is very hard to align those in almost any profession so so uh, so what do we do how there are few ideas that uh, comes to my mind or I find helpful in life of many people. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the very popular common advice is like, uh, do what you love. But the rate at which jobs are changing, what we know we want to work, that kind of job may not exist after five years or ten years. So it is not practical suggestion. The alternative idea I come up with, like, learn to appreciate what you do. It's learn to appreciate what you do. That is the idea. If you can manage to do, it will not, uh, at least not change for the first one. Like, <laughs> if you can man learn to appreciate, you will not find dissatisfaction in whatever you do. That is one idea. It's tough too, but you can give it a try. And uh, one golden rule I have for life or work is, like, the lesser expectation you have, the better. If you have zero, that's the best. So, be it live or be it your work, if you have zero expectation, the reality is always going to be somewhat better than that. So, it could be your compensation, it could be the amount of... Th okay. And uh, I'm not suggesting that you do not expect money and the all the legal stuff from your work. It's just that do not try to um, expect satisfaction kind of things. And see, this idea may seem almost impossible to implement in your life so i have a hack turn your expectation into predictions so uh, let's see how it helps okay uh, if if we have a expectation and uh, the reality comes worse than that we get dissatisfied and if you have a prediction what happens if prediction goes wrong you feel that you are wrong at one question so there is a very less chance if you see future or the outcomes as predictions, you will get wrong maybe six times out of ten, but they will not affect. They will not have the potential to affect your emotions. So, I will leave you with this idea. Thank you.